Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to start a new unit, Unit 8 Exponential Functions. In Algebra 1, so far we've covered linear functions and quadratic functions. This is going to be our third and final type of function for this year. So to keep it simple, we're going to start with its key features. So let's start with a definition. An exponential function is a function in which the independent variable x appears as an exponent. That's why it's called exponential. The exponential function will have the form y equals a parentheses b to the x power. Each letter in this equation represents one of the key features of the graph. So let's start with the letter a. The letter a represents the y-intercept. And y-intercept is just where the function crosses the y-axis. But when we're looking at a real-world problem, which for exponential functions, most of our problems are going to be real-world problems, this is going to represent the initial or starting value. Initial and starting, they mean the same thing. Okay. Then the letter B. With an exponential function, the letter B tells us how much our function is going to change. So this is our growth or decay. I was going to say factor, but I think a better word would be ratio. So have you ever heard problems or just in real life when they say, it's doubling every day or you have a car that's depreciating in value by 5% every day. So B represents that amount. So the confusing thing about exponential is you have two different types, exponential growth and exponential decay, depending on what B is. So right here on the table, right underneath, we're going to talk about how do you tell the difference. So let's start with exponential growth. A function is exponential growth when b is bigger than 1. So it can be a fraction, a decimal, anything, as long as it's bigger than 1. So things like 1.5, a fraction like 5 over 4, as long as its value is bigger than 1. But when we're dealing with word problems, a lot of time you'll see a percent a rate. So using R to represent the growth rate as a decimal, you can also say that B would be equal to 1 plus R. That would make it bigger than 1. So that example that I said a while ago, that your savings account gains interest at 5% each year, you would put 5% as your R and it'd be 1 plus 5%. So because B can be written as 1 plus R, the entire function can be rewritten as y equals a, but instead of b, you can put 1 plus r in its place to the x power. Okay, right below this is an example of what you would see when you look at a graph. This is exponential growth, and I know that it's growth because when I read the graph from left to right, so always left to right. So going this direction, that curve is going up. It's kind of cut off a little bit, but there is an arrow there. It's going up forever and ever and ever. So that makes this exponential growth. Okay, but the other key feature that we talked about was y-intercept. So let's go ahead and write that down as well. Where is the y-intercept on this graph? So if this is the x-axis. Whoops, there we go. x-axis, y-axis. Our y-intercept is right here. So it's at 1, but we always like to write this as a point. So 0, comma 1. 
One more feature that we haven't talked about yet is something called the asymptote. So right underneath the table, I left some room so that we can write a definition. The asymptote of any graph is the imaginary line that the function approaches but never crosses. So you can think of the asymptote as a fence. So when you're inside an area that's fenced in, you can get close to the fence, but you can't actually go over the fence. You can't go across it. So I'm gonna go back to our graph here. So if you look at this curve, it gets closer and closer to a horizontal line right here. So I have the luxury with my iPad of being able to zoom in. So I'm gonna zoom in for you guys. You see that purple line? It's super close to the zero, but it doesn't actually go over it. It's always gonna stay above it. So that yellow line that I just drew, that's the asymptote. There isn't actually a line there, it's an imaginary line but the purple curve gets close to it and never touches it. So now I wanna know what is the equation of that line? It's horizontal, which means that it has to be y equals, and then looking at my y axis, it's going through zero, so y equals zero. Our asymptote is at y equals zero. The good thing about algebra one is that your asymptote is always gonna be y equals zero. Once you move on to algebra two, you are gonna have transformations and that asymptote will move different places. But for now, for algebra one, all you need to know is that it's always gonna be y equals zero for your asymptote. So let's fill in all the information for exponential decay. The function is exponential. Whoops, I have a typo there. Let's fix that. So that should have said decay. When B is less than one. So pretty much the complete opposite of what growth was, right? So fractions like one half, one fourth, two thirds, it can be decimal 0.75 as long as it's less than one. So if R was our rate of decay as a decimal, B can be written as one minus R. So the whole entire function can be rewritten as a parentheses one minus r to the x power. So let's take a look at what this would be on the graph. So remember that we always read graphs from left to right. And when I do that, this graph, so left to right, is going down. That's gonna make this graph exponential decay. Let's say where the y-intercept is at. So y-intercept, this is my x-axis, y-axis, is right there at the point zero, 01. And then our asymptote Just like I said before, asymptote is gonna be in the same spot every single time right there where I did my yellow highlight at y equals zero. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it like this for a second. These are all of the important key features that you need to know about exponential functions and their graphs. Okay, so now I wanna do a few examples. We're gonna look at graphs that pertain to the real world. So example number one, so just by looking at that graph, is it growth or is it decay? This one is decay because when I read the graph from left to right, it is going down. Okay, so then now what is the y-intercept? 
this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. So it's crossing right here at the point 0, 100. So what does this number represent? So the number 100. I'm going to read my graph here. And when I'm looking at the bottom x, that's time in years. And when I look at y, it's strontium in grams. So strontium is a element in chemistry, so I'm not sure how many of y'all have heard of it before. But it's a material, so we measure in grams. So when I read the table and I put this to a story, the 100 is on the y-axis, so it has something to do with strontium. But what exactly is it? So I'm going to look at the notes really quickly. We said that the y-intercept represents the initial or starting value. So that's what the 100 represents, the number. The starting amount of strontium is 100 grams. Okay, and then the last thing that they want us to look at here is where is the asymptote? So even in a real world problem, you can see that our line is going down, 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 and it curves. It looks like it's getting super close to the zero, but it doesn't actually touch it. So this horizontal line here, that's my asymptote at y equals zero. Okay, let's look at a second example. When I read this graph from left to right, the curve is going up, which means that this is an example of exponential growth. Then we want our y-intercept. Again, we know that horizontal is x, vertical is y. So it is hitting right here. So it looks like it's labeled by fives, but this is exactly in the middle of five. So that would be 2.5, because that's half of five. But we have to be careful when we write this down, because if we are reading our graph the way we should, this has to do with population. The bottom represents years. The side, our y value, is people in hundreds. So that's the important part that I want you guys to look at, that it's in hundreds. Whoops, not cross it out, circle it. So 2.5 is a way of saying two hundred and fifty. What does this number represent? So, like we said, it's the y value, so we have to look at the y axis and it's people. And y intercept is always the initial amount. So, whatever town this is, is the initial amount of people that live there, or the initial, yeah, let's say that, number of people. Is 250. So when they decided to make this town, 250 people live there. Then our asymptote, like before, you guessed it is going to be at y equals zero. Okay, example three. It says draw a rough sketch of the exponential function y equals three parentheses two to the x power. So before I start drawing, I wanna answer the three questions. Is it growth or decay? Where's the y-intercept? And where's the asymptote gonna be? So I'm going to kind of go backwards because I know asymptote is super easy. It's always going to be at y equals 0. Now, growth or decay, we don't have a graph to look at. All we have is the function that they told us. 
So I'm going to go back to my notes for a second. How do I know the difference between exponential growth and exponential decay? Well, if you look here, the one that tells me what makes it different is B. And B is the one that's inside the parentheses. So depending on what's inside the parentheses, if it's greater than one, it's growth. If it's less than one, it's decay. So let's look at the problem again. In our A, the A place, I'm sorry, the B place, we have a two. Now two is greater than one, which makes it growth. Then that third question is, where is the y-intercept? And again, back to my notes. If you look at the equation, y-intercept is always that first number that's outside of the parentheses. So what did we have on that equation? We had three. So our y-intercept is gonna be at zero comma three. So here's my rough sketch. This is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. So y-intercept has to be at three. One, two, three, let's say that's three. Then it's exponential growth. And it's asymptote is at y equals zero. So asymptote has to get close to my yellow highlight. And because it's growth, it's gonna go up. So let's see, something like that. Okay, and then the last example, example number four, there should be a four. Draw a rough sketch of the exponential function y equals 10, one half to the x power. Okay, so just like before, I'm gonna follow the rules because what's inside the parentheses is one half. That is less than one, which means that this is gonna be exponential decay. It's gonna go down. The y-intercept is always the first number that you see outside of the parentheses. So our y-intercept is 10. And then our asymptote is always at y equals zero. So here on my graph, x, y. We have to make sure that we get close to y equals zero, that we go through 10 on the y-axis, and that we're going down. So I'm gonna count by two, so let's say two, four, six, eight, 10. Okay, and we need to go down and it needs to get close to the x-axis. So I would say my graph goes kind of like this. That was supposed to be an arrow. Okay, so this is our first lesson over the key features of exponential functions. Tomorrow you will have a six question assessment to see if we remember how to do everything. If you have any questions, please feel free to text me through Google Classroom or send me an email.